Hey guys, need to call a quick time out here. Wanted to tell your listeners what I've been telling my listeners over at OU you didn't know for a while now about all the cool things happening over at adsfreeshows.com. A brand new series has arrived on Ad Free Shows. Top of the card unpacks everything you need to know in the wrestling trading card space. And we're starting with the granddaddy of them all, the 1982 Wrestling All-Stars Series A set. Now, this set was not exclusive to any one territory at the time, as we were still right at the tail end of the territory era of professional wrestling. So it was a basically a who's who in professional wrestling, with card number one being Andre the Giant. Others included in the set include Hulk Hogan, Ric Flair, Dusty Rhodes, Ted DiBiase, and others. 20 years ago, Eric took on Stone Cold in the main event on Raw, but the real main event was the confrontation that happened backstage before the show. Now, the next week, I'm sitting in this chair, and that same guy, I don't think I had said a word to him that day. I don't think I had seen Rick up until the point he came through that door. And he's, you know, getting me, he's just telling me to get up, get out of the chair. And he's so pissed off, he's bleeding. I'm on the phone, and he's got blood <laughs> running down his chin because he bit his lip. He was so mad, he bit the inside of his mouth. He's got blood on a backstage confrontation. I hadn't even gotten out of the chair yet. (laughs) Ad-Free Shows members got to sit shotgun alongside Kevin Nash and click this co-host, Sean Oliver, as they watch back some of the worst matches in history. None more so than the Yeti. Randy now. The the mummy is not Frankenstein. You don't walk with your arms straight out. With the arms out, right? And, and, you know, a, a Yeti is also not a mummy, but... I don't know. Was this Jim Hurd? Who was here? Well, well, whose brainchild was this? Who gives a fuck? That's just a small taste of what we got waiting for you. With four levels to choose from, see for yourself why Ads Free Shows is the best value in wrestling today. Sign up now at adsfreeshows.com. Cold as a razor blade, as tight as a tourniquet, like the skin on a dying man. I don't want a piece of the world. I want the whole world. I make my own rules. Because it's much easier that way. Trust me. What's up, everybody? It's Marcus D'Angelo, and we are back in the Snake Pit. And, of course, I'm joined by the man himself, pop culture icon, master of the DDT, Hall of Famer. I mean, there's there's plenty of ways to describe him. He's Jake the Snake Roberts. What's up, man? I was just starting to get into that, man. You're starting to get a rhythm going. <laughs> I could probably do a couple more. There's a few Jeez. more left in there. How about the subject of a new action figure, Jake the Snake Roberts? No. Uh, I know that you just added it over at jakethesnakeshop.com. Yeah. And actually, it has to do with our topic today. We're talking about your rivalry with Rick Rude, or at least the start of it at WrestleMania 4. It's a two-pack of yourself and Rick Rude, right. and you're signing them over there at jakethesnakeshop.com. Yeah, yeah they, it's uh, the, the best set I've ever seen. This is the best. No, everybody's no, Nobody's touching this. Yeah, the box and everything is just really unbelievable, man. It's like, damn. <laughs> really incredibly done. Cool looking artwork on it. And yeah. it, the best part of all is Jake is signing them for you. He'll, he'll personalize it. You can get it right now at jakethesnakeshop.com. So check it out. Good good to go along with this podcast here today. You know, if you really wanted to to go full, full bore on this thing, you could uh, pick up one of the figures of Cheryl that I have. That's uh, right. Yeah, I have Cheryl figures, so we could have myself, Cheryl, and Rick Rude. I mean, come on, guys. If you know, we are all fans. If you're here listening, that means that you're a fan of that old school wrestling, the golden age of professional wrestling. And if you don't own this stuff, you're kind of missing out on some really cool stuff. It is. It's really sharp. Sim Bodie did a hell of a job on Cheryl. That's uh, that's going to be available now over there at jakethesnakeshop.com. So get over there and check it out, gang. And uh, thank you for checking us out here today. We're talking about WrestleMania 4. It's 35 years ago that we're talking about. It'll be uh, 35 years ago last week as this thing is airing. And uh, I'm excited to get into it. we got a lot of news and notes. You ready to roll? Let's do it. All right. Well, 
let's start out here with something from the observer we'll get we'll get melter to weigh in right out of the gate uh this is from the January 4th, 1988 Observer. The battle of Thanksgiving will continue, so to speak, with the next go-round in the war for the pay-per-view dollar on January 24th. As most of you know, Jim Crockett Promotions will be presenting its Bunkhouse Stampede Finals, an 11-man street fight battle royal of sorts with the prize ballyhooed at $500,000. It will be Crockett's first ever legitimate crack at the potentially lucrative pay-per-view market. McMahon pretty well put the squeeze on their attempts to send Starcade nationally, and this time McMahon's counter will be a television special on the USA Network for free. Titan will present a Royal Rumble Battle Royal, an idea tried once in St. Louis where it flopped miserably both from an economic standpoint and an aesthetic standpoint. By all accounts, the match was a joke. So I had to include this because uh, Meltzer is clearly very wrong. Um, it's, yeah. Royal Rumble is one of the most successful things ever done by WWE. Yeah, um, Still going strong today. Uh, he referenced it here, though. The real first Royal Rumble happened at a house show in late 1987 yeah. at the Keele Auditorium uh, as, a, as a practice. Were you in that Royal Rumble, Jake? I don't believe I was. I don't. I can't remember, to tell you the truth. Oh, okay. Well, it's you know, it feels like one of those weird concepts uh, that you know, if you had been involved in it, I'm, I'm guessing you probably would have uh, remembered it. So mm, maybe not. I maybe. know that you were in this. I know that you were in the second Royal Rumble, though. Um, oh, you yeah. know, the, the televised one. What did you think of the concept? I liked it. I liked it a lot, man. It was exciting. Uh, it was. Uh, it was hard. It was hard on you. Because uh, each time somebody fresh came to the ring, they wanted to come in and shine, you know. And uh, it was your job to let them shine. So if you got an early number, you're out there and you're out there for 20 or 30 names to come in the ring and beat the shit out of you. So at the end of the night, you've been you've been tossed around like a used pork chop, you know. And the dog wouldn't even eat that son of a bitch because it's so beat up. <laughs> Golly, man. It's, I mean, you know, it's, I know certainly you had done a, a lot of battle royals and whatnot leading mm -hmm. up to this, but it is a pretty innovative concept uh, by Pat Patterson. You know, every two mm -hmm. minutes, a, new, a yeah. new competitor comes in. And, you know, as uh, your old strategy, right? Get low, stay in the corner, don't Damn catch straight. an elbow. That's it. <laughs> well, That's I also. It. I also want to talk to you a little bit about the uh, gamesmanship here from Vince um, and these behaviors that would ultimately force JCP to sell to Turner. Uh, not only is he doing it here with the Royal Rumble to combat the bunkhouse stampede, but famously Survivor Series in 1987 um, was created to counter JCP's Thanksgiving Day uh, Starcade that year. Yeah. So uh, Vince would even go to cable companies and give the ultimatum that if they carried Starcade, they wouldn't get the next WrestleMania. Uh, did you see this as Vince potentially being able to create a monopoly in pro wrestling? Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's that's what it was all about. That's what it was all about, brother. He was going for all the marbles. He gets all of them. And if you don't play his game, you don't get to play. What did you think of these practices? Smart business or like ultimately bad for business? Well, it was it was bad for the boys, but it was smart for Vince. Mm -hmm. You know, the boys... Uh, if you don't have another place to go work, then you don't have any options. When you don't have any options, you're under the thumb then, man. You got to roll over and play dead. Whenever he says jump, you got to jump. You know, you don't have a choice. And we saw where ultimately, you know, these practices, you know, it would take, it would take, you know, over 10 years or whatever, but uh, down the road, he, Vince gets what he wants. He got what he wanted. Uh, he created a monopoly. Yeah. And uh, it's, people really, if they wanted to be on a national stage in professional wrestling, it was WWE or nothing there for a while. Absolutely, man. It was the only game in town, and uh, you dived to do it. You know, you just you do anything to be there. And, you know, it's I've also heard a lot of people say over the years that uh, part of being successful in professional wrestling is having a competition to help you level yourself up. Oh, absolutely, man. If you don't have any competition, it hurts. Because that means you don't have a bar to reach. You just go out and do whatever you want to do, and that has to be good enough. But if you've got competition, then you've got somebody to gauge yourself with. And if you don't measure up, uh, you're in trouble. On January 2nd, Saturday night's main event aired, which had been filmed on 12-7. You won a short match there with Sika. Uh, what did you think of working with him and the incredible rise and legacy of that family of wrestlers? Well, I was terrified, you know. <laughs> I'll be straight up with you. I'd wrestle Sika probably a hundred times, 
uh, in Mid South, and uh, it was terrifying, man. And uh, in fact, uh, there was an incident where, oh my gosh, this, this is too much. He and uh, they all the wrestlers were staying at a hotel in Baton Rouge, and they were all out getting sun. And Sika was laying down out there, and you know. Just having a nice afternoon in the sun, drinking a few beers, you know, and not bothering nobody. And then some drunk comes out to the pool and starts talking shit. And uh, Sika wound up jumping up off, off his lounge chair and chasing the guy down the street. No, no. First, he, he reached up and backhanded the guy. <laughs> you know, just gave him a big backhand. And when he did, blood went everywhere. From a backhand, yeah, the guy's face was just opened up. Wow, so the guy took off running, and Sika is chasing him on asphalt and glass, running down the side of the highway, screaming at the guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, he comes to the show that night, he's got his hand all wrapped up. He's like, Oh, bro, I think I broke my hand, man. I'm like, Oh, shit, that's a shame, you know, we didn't do anything. Well, several nights later, man, the hand is swelling. And we're like, damn, bro, maybe you did break it. He's like, yeah, I think I broke my hand, man. It, it, I can see the bone. And he shows it to me. And I'm like, that's not a bone. That's a fucking tooth. <laughs> you got one of the guy's teeth and it's stuck in your hand. Oh, my God. Yeah. It, it, it broke his tooth off into his hand. And it had been in there for like four days, man, festering up, you know. (laughs) That is a hellacious backslip. Oh, my God. (laughs) Plus, uh, Alpha Alpha had knocked me out in a match with a headbutt. He got pissed off at me and headbutted me and knocked me out. Uh, What did you do to piss him off? Uh, He lifted him in the face. I, I guess that'll do it. I guess it did. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing for sure. I didn't What's do that? it again. <laughs> Fuck no. Hell, he, it only takes once to learn that lesson, especially no with a, shit, man. a dude that's tough like that. It's, yeah, uh, man. What about like the bloodline? Have you seen a lot of the stuff that the bloodline has been up to? Oh, yeah. WWE? yeah. What do you think of them? Yeah. Well, it's unbelievable, man. It's a family. It's the way families are supposed to be, isn't it? That's it. I mean, turmoil issues, good things, bad things. It's I mean, it's it's been fun watching how they have developed and really cool to see like this legacy of professional wrestlers in this. Yeah. Uh, how do you say it? An Hawaii family? Annoy. Annoy? Yeah, whatever. Yeah, something like that. Mr. Um, <laughs> yeah, let's let's just call him Mr. whatever we yeah. call him. Uh, all right, Jake. One sixteen is the first time it's noted that you cross paths with Rick Rude, beating him by countout in Sacramento. Uh, so, do you remember when the first time you would have crossed paths with Rick Rude would have been in the in the ring? Uh, how about just in 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 general in wrestling? Oh my God! In general, well, mm-hmm. let me tell you the Rick Rude story. Ooh, <laughs> I'm excited now. Um, I was at Georgia Championship Wrestling. I was doing the booking there. And uh, I was living with uh, Animal from the Road Warriors. Mm-hmm. And he told me, he says, hey, one of my buddies here is going to come down. He said, all right, if he stays with us. I'm like, yeah, fuck yeah, man. So Rick comes down. And he's got a bit of an attitude, you know. Mm-hmm. So we told him, man, there's a, you know, we had to go work. But he was going to stay at home. So... We told him there was a bar down the street that was really hot, and it was, man. It was it was jam packed, and there was a lot of people in there. We told him, said you better be careful in there, though, man. You know, you're going to go strutting in there. Somebody's not going to like it. A bunch of rednecks. <laughs> I don't fucking care. You know. <laughs> so we come home that night, and he wasn't back yet, and. uh we get up the next morning and we go into the living room. We're like, oh my God, we had a white couch, but now it's red. Oh no. His blood. Oh no. Oh yeah. They had uh, split his eye pretty good, man. 
and uh, he was passed out. So we woke him up and said, what the fuck happened, man? He goes, oh, fuck, man. I got suckered into this deal. Fuck, man, this fucking bitch. Said, uh, we were leaving. We were going to come back over here so I could fuck her. Yeah. <laughs> he said, we got in the parking lot, and there's two guys beating up this one guy. She, she told him, she goes, oh, my God, that's my friend. I know him. Please help him. Please help him. So he runs over to help the friend, and then all of a sudden, all three guys are on him. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. And uh, they broke his jewelry off of him. They wanted his gold chain. He had a great big, heavy gold chain with a big anchor on it, probably $5,000 worth of gold. My God. And they broke that, and they split him open, left him laying in the parking lot. Holy shit, man. And, you know, you hear all the time that, that, that Rick Rude was just a double tough son of oh, a bitch. Oh, yeah. He was an animal, man. Carved but, out of stone. But, man, three three dudes is tall tall odds. Yeah, especially when you think one's on your side. Oh, good Lord. And then all of a sudden you're fighting two guys, and the guy that, that you're helping gets up and clumps you from behind. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. Fuck. That is, that's a little frightening. Yeah, it was, man. But anyway, he split his eye. He bled all over everything. So that was my first meeting with Rick. <laughs> it does get better. <laughs> yes, I would say yeah, that, uh, yeah. that down the road, things are looking up for Rick. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, you kind of mentioned it. You know, you've we as wrestling fans hear all the time that he was kind of like this salty dude you really mm -hmm. don't want to fuck with. Right. Um, it's, what were your early impressions of him as a guy? Like you, you said, he, uh, he seemed a little arrogant. Yeah, not arrogant. He was just salty, man. Just, you know, seemed like he was always right on the edge, ready to fucking blow up. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's called steroid rage. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, you know, somebody else that gets described in that way pretty often is Scott Steiner, who's yeah. always, always yeah. very much on the edge. Uh, yeah. You kind of want to watch what you say. And so, yeah. certainly steroids probably a factor. Could have been. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> it's either that or the Tootsie Rolls. Maybe it I'm, was the Tootsie Rolls. I'm going to say it's the steroids. <laughs> um, well, tootsie Rolls hurt if you use them in an enema. You know? that, would, <laughs> that's, well, that would probably make you salty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> make you a lot of other things, too. Yeah. Yeah, it's plugged up. <laughs> Uh, well, Jake, oh the God. main event arrives on February 5th, and it's it's a pretty big deal for the WWF. Uh, they're airing live on NBC. Really mm -hmm. awesome build and reported 15.2 Nielsen rating and 33 million viewers, uh, both wow. are records in the American television market. Yeah. Um, wow. So just incredible. Uh, you worked with the great Harley Race here, but it's a dark match. Is it? Mm. Uh, is it disappointing not to have been televised on a match? Okay, uh, man. Such a huge event. Hell yeah. You know, you, you always want to be on the show. You know, you never want to be the dark match, but at least it was still a payday. Yeah, I was I was I was going to say, you know, I think that uh, a lot of performers, at least from what I've heard, they view that as like, ah, you know, at least I'm on the card. It's a hot crowd or yeah. whatever. But man, it's uh, it, yeah, it does, hurt a little bit. It does wonders for marketing that. to be on TV for that kind of shit. Yeah, it does. Um, well, we all know what happens here. It's the famous switcheroo with the Hebner brothers and the plastic surgery ag angle uh, to get the belt off of Hogan before Mania. So Andre attempts to gift the belt to DiBiase, but it would, of course, be held up. And that's what, that's what brings us to the tournament at WrestleMania. Uh, mm -hmm. Jake, the, the Hebner brothers, the screw job finish, plastic yeah. surgery. Uh, as a guy who had done some booking yourself, what did you think of this story? I loved it. I loved it. It worked. It certainly did. And it's, you know, I think that a lot of people point to it as one of the best stories ever told in uh, professional wrestling. And it's like, I don't know, that might be a little bit too far. Yeah, know, that's a bit far. I know that the Mega Powers is, you know, considered a great one. NWO, of course. So, like, there's there have been a lot of good stories, but man, yeah. that's certainly memorable. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, well, DiBiase is WWF champion. You know, I referenced it here. Andre tried to gift it to him, and some people consider it a title reign for DiBiase. Most people don't. I don't think that WWF acknowledges it. No. Uh, so do you think WWF missed the boat by not making him a champion and having Hogan chase? Yeah. Yeah, I do, man. But um, they decided not to do it. They decided to go with what they did. 
And uh, what are you going to do, man? Uh, DiBiase would have been a good champion. No doubt. No doubt. You know, it, it stinks. Uh, it's it's one of those things where I think that, uh, you know, we talked about it last week with with Bad News Brown and Vince McMahon kind of making promises mm-hmm. and whatnot. I'd, I had heard similar stuff when it came to Ted DiBiase. Did Ted ever talk to you about wanting to be no. champion or it wasn't no. really his thing? Oh, it was his thing. Oh, he wanted yeah. to be. Oh, yeah. Well, he, he got to be the million dollar champion. Uh, we'll carry that yeah. thing around. So I guess that's cool. Yeah, yeah, uh, his home belt. I, I did want to ask you, Jake, and I should have brought this up when we were talking about it on the DiBiase episode a while back, but you took his million-dollar belt, obviously, as we discussed. Uh-huh. Were you traveling with it? Oh, yeah. So I've heard that that thing is pretty expensive. Yes, it's very expensive. So <laughs> Yeah, keep it close. So, yeah, it's, you know, we just saw where, uh, and I think it was an angle, but Wardlow got his vehicle broken into. We heard the same thing about Jericho years ago with the AEW title. Somebody stole it. It's like, uh, do you have that thing in like a fucking Halliburton? Like, yep, um, Halliburton, and you never leave it alone. So you got to be like James Bond and like handcuff it to you. Yeah, no shit. Uh, it'd be scary to lose that. Um, so I mentioned it here, a tournament for the WWF title. I've heard arguments go both ways where some people say the tournaments are great. Some people th- think they're anticlimactic. Where do you fall on that? I am anticlimactic. Yeah. There's it's just too much going on, man. Too many, too many guys have to wrestle two or three times. Uh, you know, it's just not good. Right. And, you know, we're going to we're going to wind up watching. It's it's our only clip this week. We're going to watch uh, the end of your match in that tournament. But you can kind of uh. see that, that, you know, it's yourself and Rick Rude. It's, you know, two marquee players and the crowd is pretty dead. And it's because yeah. they've already seen essentially a full show at this point. <laughs> they've seen a full show at this point. We have no finish to go to. And we're just trying to hold on. And all I was trying to do is make it. Because Rick was in such great shape, man. He was dragging me through that ring up and down. All around, I was so blown up, man. I was trying to puke. Oh man, I'm oh, excited to watch horrible. this thing. I'm excited to watch this thing back with you and get your take on it after right. you after you watch it. We'll, we'll get there here in just a little bit. Uh, on the house shows, you're putting over DiBiase and One Man Gang heading into Mania. I've heard mm-hmm. a lot of guys talk about uh, WWF, WWF hurting their characters with losses heading into big shows, but I never really got that impression that you felt that way. No. Um, I, I think I already know the answer to this, but was there ever a loss that you felt like damaged your career? I don't know. Tell me. Tell me which one did it. I, I, my answer, or the, what what I meant whenever I said I think I already know the answer to this is no. Like, it's, yeah, I, I mean, you, you, you're, you know, everywhere you went, you were over. So yeah, I don't think I don't you know. ever hurt you. <laughs> I don't think anything ever hurt my career other than myself. Performers today take uh, wins and losses. Oh my God! Don't so even seriously. get me started there. Holy shit! <laughs> I won't. I won't. I won't let oh. you get off on a tirade. But I do want to know what advice would you give to modern performance performers when it comes to wins and losses? If you don't have enough talent to carry your carry your your character through a loss, then you need to do something. I I I think that that's perfectly said. Um, cause uh, let me say it's uh, plenty of people have had their shoulders pinned to that mat. And the next week yeah. they come out on TV and they get a big reaction. Yeah. So Damn you straight. got, you got bigger problems than taking a loss. If you're not getting a reaction after a loss, you got that right. Um, in the final issue of the observer before WrestleMania, Meltzer gives spoilers based on TV tapings and backstage news. Among them is the plans for you and Rick rude following mania. And here's what it says. The rude Roberts thing is kind of cute. Rude's gimmick will be before every match, he kisses a woman in the audience. A plan, of course. Well, on a TV show, he'll kiss Jake's wife. Isn't it funny? For years, promotions tried like crazy to cover up that any wrestlers were married because they were afraid they'd lose women groupies over it. Uh, (laughs) So so, uh, let me start here. I'm really looking forward to discussing the angle with Cheryl and Rude and yourself sometime. We're going to do it sometime really soon. But uh, for right now, I just want to know, what was the groupie scene like for you at this stage, Jake? Oh, my God, brother. It was insane. You know, I mean, uh, everywhere you went, there were women, you know, and uh, it, it didn't. It didn't have to be at the show. They could be at the hotel. They could be on the airplane. They could be walking down the street. It didn't matter if they seen you, they're going to react. And uh, I just, for the most part, tried to keep my shit straight. Mm -hmm. I I failed, but um, 
a few times, but um, I regret it because uh, it cost you. It cost you um, a lot. You know, when you uh, step outside your marriage, you might think, "Oh, it won't really matter. She won't know." Well, here's the thing, guys. All that does is plant the seed in your head. Maybe she might be cheating too. Mm -hmm. Think about that. The other thing is, is you lose that intimacy that you had with your wife. You know, when she's the only woman that you ever touch, you get to know her pretty well, man, inside and out, you know. Yep. And uh, you get extremely close. There's a bond that, that grows. But if you go outside your marriage, that dies, it withers and dies. So uh, don't do it. I think that's very well said, Jake. And, you know, there's there's a lot of things that you can break in life and easily yeah. put back together. It's really, really hard to put trust back it together. It damn sure is, man. I mean, uh, yeah, it's it's horrible, man. Well, and, you know, it's, look, there's no excuse for cheating. However, no. I will say at this time, you're a young man and you, you're you getting a lot of money. You're getting a lot of attention. And we talked about this uh, when we referenced uh, the eventual drug problems that you deal with, yeah. where it's like if it, when you're out and about and there's people approaching you and they're giving you free things. Oh, and there's women over here and all who yeah. want to sleep with you. Man, that's a lot of temptation for any dude. Yeah, it is, man. But no, no excuse. No excuse for going outside your marriage, man. Totally agree. Um, well, so who who first came to you with the idea of bringing your wife into the WWF? Uh, Vince and Pat. <clears throat> they called me and told me they wanted to see us. And we flew to New York and uh, went over to Stanford and sat down with them and talked about it. Um, and so we hear all the time that the pro, re pro wrestling is like a pirate ship. And you don't want to bring your wife onto the pirate ship. Yep. How did you feel about uh, this it idea when bad. they pitched it? Well, I felt good about it because I was going to be able to have her with me. I didn't even think about the bad side of it, but that quickly reared its head. And what would happen would be my wife is sitting in the back seeing these guys with girls. It's not their wives. Mm. And she's like, what the fuck? Is this what you do when I'm not here? Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and and, and what's, uh, what's the answer under those circumstances? There is no for answer. You? Keep your mouth shut, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when it's somebody that my wife knows very well and knows their wife very well. Oh, man. And now the guy's telling me, tell, tell your wife to keep her fucking mouth shut. Oh, no. Excuse me? No, motherfucker. You fucking say something to her if you want her to keep her mouth shut. Why don't you quit sticking your dick in everything? How about that? <laughs> That's probably a simpler solution. Yeah. Yeah, there was a couple of guys that got pretty hot about it. Well, I won't ask you to name any names because uh, we don't want to out anybody. Certainly, if no. you know, certainly if they're still around. Uh, but man, that's they that, are. Puts, that puts you in a really awkward position too, because then if their wife does find out, all of a sudden the heat's on you. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> now, uh, do you think that they uh, they brought or wanted to bring Cheryl in in part uh, to help kind of calm you down? Because uh, I know yeah, that you exactly. were running hard. Yeah, you think that was exactly. a big aspect of it? Yeah, it was. I'd just come out of rehab and everything, and they wanted something to calm me down, some support. And the thought was good, you know, except for the fact that everything that they, she's seen, mm -hmm. you know, but uh, it also showed her just how tough it was to be on the road. You know, the, the 6 a.m. flights after getting in bed at 2.30, you know, and uh, the hell that you go through on these airplanes and traveling and get to the next town, going to a gym, eat, hurry up, got to go again, get to the building, blah, blah, blah. I mean, it's, it's endless. Mm -hmm. You know, and you're on a time constraint on everything. There's no time to kick back and relax. Are you fucking kidding me? Huh. <laughs> So, I mean, that's a positive in it that Cheryl finally gets to see, like, hey, look, it's not like I'm out here just goofing around with my buddies all the yeah. time. Like, a lot of this sucks. It did. It did. 
It surely did. Well, uh, before we move on, I did want to ask one more question, and that's Vincent Patter coming to you with this idea of mm -hmm. having Rick, Rick Rude put his hands on your beautiful wife. And yeah. so, I mean, initially when you hear that, are you like, hey, that's got great potential? Or you're like, hold on a minute. What, what were your thoughts? I was like, well, exactly what do we mean here? I mean, he's not going to kiss her. And he can try, but she will not let him kiss her. <laughs> uh, she would have, she would have grabbed his nuts and twisted them probably. <laughs> yeah, I haven't I haven't spent uh, any time around Cheryl. I've talked to her a few times, and she doesn't yeah. strike me as a woman to piss with. No, no, she'll tell you real quick how it's how it's going to be. Well, I'm looking forward to having her on the podcast. Uh, we are yeah, approaching we're, we're approaching the uh, the 35 year an anniversary of her slapping rude, and I think that we got to get her on the podcast to discuss. Yeah. That. Definitely. We'll make it happen. All right, Jake, uh, we'll get more in-depth on that rivalry soon. But right now, we're at WrestleMania four, and it takes place, of course, at uh, Trump Plaza in Atlantic mm -hmm. City. Uh, first of all, Jake, how much money do you think you spent while you are in, in Atlantic City? Too damn much. <laughs> Probably about five grand. Ooh, God almighty. Yeah. Now, uh, what is your, what's your game of choice? Blackjack. All right, and what would you? What do you think is the biggest win you've ever gotten while gambling? Oh, five, five thousand, six thousand. I'm, I'm afraid to ask. What do you think is your biggest loss gambling? Oh, two grand. Oh, okay. So not, not quite so bad. No, 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 no. I've, all, I usually come out on top. Yeah. Oh, and are you good about like walking away once you're on top, or are you one of those guys that hangs around a little bit? Well, I usually hang around too long, but I do get away from the table with something in my pocket. All right, well, that's that's the best way to do it. I know that you had told me about going to Atlantic City and how like, you actually wound up losing. I don't know if it was this time or at WrestleMania Five, but you actually lost money on the deal um, oh, yeah. between food and all that kind of shit along the way. Oh yeah. So, whew, man, there's a lot of temptation out there. Oh, that was during, that was when we did that fucking TV show. Where oh, played, where we played. Uh, I played the the, the horn. <laughs> okay, I got that. Was it? Yeah, when I blew the horn, <laughs> <laughs> and I sucked. Man, oh man, some of you know for all the great stuff that was happening in Sarah, there were some fucking. Uh, there were some real up. stinkers. <laughs> Um, well, I do want to ask you a couple more questions before we get to the match. First off, Bad News Brown wins this battle royal to start off the show, and Bret Hart returns to the ring to drop kick him and break his trophy. Uh, Meltzer would correctly speculate that Bret would soon be turning babyface, and we all know how that turned out. It happened, and he would eventually yeah. become the champion there. Yeah. Uh, as, as someone who spent a lot of time with Bret, and it, you know, certainly has respect for his work, did you see him rising to the level he did in wrestling? No, I didn't. Why? Why do you think? He I just didn't. Have? I just didn't think he was a championship material. You know, with with uh, what Vince usually wanted in championship, uh, carrying the belt, he didn't have the look. Mm -hmm. You know, he didn't have the size. You know, he, he didn't have any of it. Yeah, he's a great wrestler, but there's a lot of fucking great wrestlers out there. That's it too, and you know it is. It is also the era of really over the top personalities with Savage and Hogan yeah. and yeah. All, yourself, like all these guys with these great big personalities. Like you were subtle, but you were still a big personality, and you had the snake. You're a huge guy, um, and so it's yeah. It's I don't. I don't think a lot of people could have predicted that Brett would have no. had the success that he did. Nobody. And you know his promo work wasn't exactly fantastic <laughs> either. <laughs> so. Okay, we'll we'll say that. <laughs> Maybe I should uh, cut that out. I don't need to get the no, heat. No, you let you get some heat. <laughs> well, as we all know, Savage would go on to win the tournament and become WWF champion for the first time. Uh, Savage himself, not a huge guy. Um, do you think that this was him no. ushering in that era of smaller performers kind of getting yeah. on top? Yeah, he was the first. Uh, what did you think of Randy as the guy to carry the banner? Great. Great. Why not? Hard to argue it. I mean, you know, we talk about big personalities. I don't. I don't know if anybody in the in uh, the WWF had a bigger personality than Savage. No. Oh. Well, Jake, Savage might have been the, in the main event at Mania, but we're to our main event here, which is your match with Rick Rude. I've got the final minutes of it, and I'm going to play it right now. He's out now. You heard Heenan yell, "He's out! He's out!" Well, he's not out yet. 
the brain job. Ah, look at that, the snake grabbing some hair of his own out there. Hey, do whatever you have to do, Jess, at this particular point in time. Oh, it's okay as long as you like him, huh, well, No, I didn't say that. I think for everybody involved here, you pull out all the stops, Jess. The gold is at stake here. That's what I said earlier, Gorilla. I said it's not how you play the game, it's whether you win or lose. Well, and you got all over my case about that. I didn't say that. I only questioned some of these things that you've said over the years. I think you've been hanging out with McMahon too much lately. You think so? Yeah. He's a bad influence on anybody. Still with that reverse chin lock, ravishing Rick Rude, and it, the snake says no. One finger up saying no. Well, I can't believe any wrestler is going to submit, not in a tournament like this. They'll get knocked out before they'll ever submit. Don't you agree, Gorilla? Absolutely. I want to mention as we're watching, Rude has got you in this uh, kind of a chokehold. You're laying on your side. Yeah. Was he leaning on you at all, blowing you up? Sometimes. Uh, would he do that intentionally? Uh, I don't think so. All right, I, I'm I'm a little smartened up after we did our uh, WrestleMania yeah. bonus episode and seeing how guys can yeah. blow each other up. So it made me wonder. obviously been coached well on the DDT by Heenan because he's reacting on instinct. When he feels that front face lock go in, he reacts immediately to break that DDT. Well, so far he's shown us two nice counters. Oh, look at this. Go to work on that abdominal area. Jake, you've got a Hogan-level tan right there. Were you spending some yeah. time on the beach in Atlantic City? Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> Man, is it bronzed up. Yeah. It, didn't it doesn't take much for me to get dark. It looks really like don't. Million, looks like a million bucks. I know that Rude is like this, uh, the the body guy, and I know that most yeah. of those guys were tan, but holy shit, your tan is outdoing his. Yeah, my, my skin's a natural bronze. Yeah, that's a good thing for this business. Damn yeah, straight. Well, whichever one should become victorious, if either one does, it'll, this match is taking a whole lot out of it. They both clotheslined each other. Each one right for the pickings right now. If one guy could roll the other way, he might get a three count. Final matchup in the opening round of our special elimination tournament. As one, two, three matches have already been set for the quarterfinal round, Andre will meet, of course, the Hulkster. The Million Dollar Man meets the Rock Morocco. Valentine takes on the Macho Man and the gang waiting for the winner of this one. There's a bell. Did he get the pin? I, I didn't hear a three count, though. I only heard a one count with a foot on the ropes. Referee waved something off. Here is the referee's official decision. He has ruled this bout. A draw. Oh, Therefore, that means both of them are gone. That's right. Eliminated from the tournament. Both of these Jake, guys are history. Both Jake the Snake and Ravishing Rick Rude are now eliminated from the tournament as a result of a draw. And you know what else that means is we take a look at Damien. The big guy, the 747, draws a bye, Jess. That's right. The one-man gang gets a bye. That could be extremely important, Gorilla. Holy mackerel, the ramifications of this are just unreal. All right, well, there it was. That was the match. Uh, I, blew, I blew up watching it. <laughs> Jake, uh, your immediate thoughts following that clip, what do you think? Uh, we worked hard, man, but it didn't matter. People knew what was going on. Yeah, it's you know the event as a whole met some criticism uh, with people saying it was too long. Hogan should have been on top. Too many matches, etc. Yeah. 
yeah. when it when it came to yourself and Rude, Melter points out that you did some great stuff in the match, but overall yeah. it was just too many rest holds and the finish was lame. I you know, yeah. and and even me, I mean, <sighs> of hindsight, I'm I'm like, okay, a stalemate is kind of cool because these guys are going to move on to a program, and it's <clears> we're, show, we're showing the fans that they're evenly matched. But we didn't yeah. know at the time where this was going, so this could have no. been a one off, and it's uh, yeah, it just kind of fell flat. Yeah, it sucked, you know. That WrestleMania four is probably the worst booking ever. Yep. That's the problem. You know, coming up with this fucking tournament for WrestleMania, it stunk. It really did. It didn't work, and I'm not sure who told you to uh, tease the snake, uh, but, like, the crowd, all of a sudden, you went for that bag, and you, you saw everybody ro- rose yeah, to their feet, and they're right ready up. for it, and then it's he gets out of the ring, and it's like, you know, everybody's maybe, boner. Maybe next time. Everybody's boner went down. Yeah, including <laughs> the snakes. Both well, of them. <laughs> so uh, the draw with Rude, uh, I mean, we again, we have the benefit of hindsight. It kind of works, but yeah. at the time, it, were it, you – were you really disappointed with that? Sure, I was. I was down, man. I was, I was really upset about it. Really. Yeah, it stinks. You know, everybody kind of, you know, this is only WrestleMania four, and the term WrestleMania moment hadn't been coined yet. But you know, it's the biggest show in professional wrestling. You want to have a big shining moment. Yeah, just man. Didn't really and happen. Now, now you're getting not given a chance to have it. So, it was just wasted, wasted time. Really was. Frustrating, but you know we are yeah. on the road to, to something better. Um, I, I have heard folks say over the years that Rude, Rude's work uh, could be a little hot and cold. What did you think of his ring work? Yeah, it was hot and cold. Sometimes he was on, sometimes he wasn't. Do you think it depended on his mood? Or? His mood. Yeah. Yeah, definitely his mood. But you said that uh, going 15 minutes with him got you. Oh, blew you God up. God damn right, man. It did. So prior really to that, is is he leaning on you? Is he just making you run? Uh, like, a little he bit. You? He's leaning on me a little bit. Before we go, one more question. Yeah. Um, I've heard some people say that uh, Rude was all about business, tended to keep to himself at times, and yeah. keep people at arm's length. Yeah. Uh, your personal relationship with him at this time, what would you say it was like? It was it was good. You know, as good as it's going to get. Rick didn't want somebody close to him, you know. He had two or three people he'd let close, one of them being Mr. Perfect and the Road Warriors. Well, that's that Minnesota crew of guys. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, man, plenty of stories there. Hopefully we'll get to some of them whenever we talk about Rick Rude, and hopefully we'll have Cheryl here present for it. Yeah. Um, Jake, I'm really excited to learn more about your time working with him. And, uh, I think that this episode was fun. Uh, you know, WrestleMania four might've been a, a bit of a, a dud in general, not just your match with him, but just the entire thing. But, uh, I think we, we had some fun here today. It was, it was oh, an yeah. interesting episode. Everybody knows we're recording this on uh, the Monday before WrestleMania 39, which means yeah. that this weekend you're set to hit LA and go to WrestleCon. Yeah. So yeah. with that being the case, aligning our schedules won't be easy. So we're calling an audible. Yeah. Next week on the podcast, we've got a special guest host filling in for you, and it's a guy that is a huge fan of yours. And uh, he he told me himself he took a lot of inspiration from you for his yeah. iconic character. Uh, we're talking to Raven next week, uh, and oh, we're talking, be good. yeah, yeah, we're talking about uh, his rivalry with another buddy of yours, Diamond Dallas Page, twenty five years ago, right now. Wow, that'll be good. Now I have to listen. It's going to be a fun episode, and we're having a lot of fun here. Uh, And, guys, if you're looking to capture the pro wrestling demographic of males 25 to 54, you cannot do any better than advertising right here on the Snake Pit with your product or business. You're going to see results from our loyal listeners. I mean, this guy right next to me is a legitimate pop culture icon, and he's going to put over your product or service. Come on, what are you doing? Just go check it out. It's at advertisewithsnake.com. Partner up with the legendary Jake the Snake Roberts. Um, I mentioned it earlier. We spent this episode talking about the start of your legendary rivalry with Rick, with Rick Rude. And recently, Mattel created that Ultimate Edition 2-pack. We got them over at jakethesnakeshop.com. And Jake is going to sign them for you guys. He can personalize them. All of the above. Just go check it out. That's jakethesnakeshop.com. Not only that, but a ton of other awesome collectibles there. <sighs> Also, if you're looking for the perfect, unique, unforgettable gift for the wrestling fan in your life, get over there to Jake's Cameo page at cameo.com forward slash Jake Snake. You want to, we've, we've mentioned it here before. He'll quit, <coughs> quit your job for you. He'll, oh, he'll yeah. quit your relationship for you. Or he'll just fuck up your life. He'll fuck up your whole life, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Who doesn't want that? So look, yeah. it's... <laughs> 
<laughs> in in reality, uh, he could just cut a promo on you. He'll wish you happy birthday. It doesn't matter. Get over there. It's cameo.com forward slash Jake Snake. I'll fuck up. That's going to be the tagline. I'll fuck up your whole life, man. Yeah. Uh, show some uh, if you're enjoying the podcast, why don't you show us a little support? Get over to boxygimmicks.com and have a look at some of the incredible merch we've got there. Vintage style shirts, hats, mugs, fanny packs, and more. I love nostalgia. I'm a child of the 80s and 90s, and my vision was to, to create merch that reflected that passion. And I know so many fans uh share that passion. So just go have a look at it. See for yourself. It's boxygimmicks.com, and that's our page, the snake pit. Check us out on YouTube at youtube.com at Snake Pit Pod for short clips from our show, highlights, and some exclusive content. Uh, like, subscribe, and hit the notifications bell over there. Also, if you've enjoyed our podcast, uh, like, subscribe, and give us a five star review on all platforms uh, for your uh, podcast because, man, that really helps us out a ton. <sighs> Just a reminder you can get the Snake Pit and all the other shows in our network early and ad free at adfreeshows.com. Jake and I released a piece of bonus content here for March, and we're going to have another one coming up here in April. Uh, Jake and I haven't talked about it yet, but I've got something pretty fun in mind, which we can talk about off air, Jake. It's going to be oh, a lot Lord. of fun. And, man, f- fans, if you love wrestling and you're not part of adfreeshows.com you are missing out it's adfreeshows.com starts at just nine dollars a month get over there check it out catch jake on twitter at jake snake ddt on instagram at jake the snake ddt and on facebook at real jake the snake follow me at marcus pd Angel on twitter and follow the podcast on all social platforms jake have fun at mania got to man got to i'll bring you back a prize that sounds wonderful and uh we will have fun here next week on the snake pit As an adult, don't we all miss spring break? Nothing like taking a week off from all your responsibilities. Well, here's the next best thing for adults, a spring break from house payments. Savewithconrad.com can help you get rid of all your credit card debt, just like that. We're routinely helping our listeners save five, six, seven, even 800 bucks a month. And you don't need perfect credit or money out of your pocket to do this, but check this out. No house payments for two months at savewithconrad.com.